Hello and welcome back to my Allen Bradley PLC test bench. Today we're going to look at one of the workhorses of the Allen Bradley line from the 1771 series which is the analog input. This is the 1771 IFE and this particular one happens to be a series C which was the last revision that they uh, put out. This It has a uh, doesn't even have a date code on it, but I suspect it was in the mid 90s. Now, there was millions of these put out, from what I understand, and there's still more than a few million of them in service. So, when you're uh, going out and into the field, you're going to find these things. And they're good, rugged, heavy duty, and they just last, which is why Alan Bradley wants to get rid of them. So, we're going to go through this. Um, they're a little more difficult, and takes a little finesse to set them up compared to the control logics of today. They're heavier components, which you'll see when we open it up, and everything is, is physical jumpers to set your uh, your ranges from uh, voltage, single-ended, differential, current, milliamps, and then you do some, some online. Now, to test these, because it's a 16-channel, single-ended input, what I've had to set up for voltage, and I'm using an OFE1 analog output, and these do voltage only, and they're four channels. So I have one wiring arm made up for voltage, and each of the four output channels does four input channels. Pretty straightforward and simple. On the current, because it's same thing, on the OFE2, which is a four channel analog output card, that's all they came in, um, I have set up two sets of each one is four channels, so I use two of them at one time, and that gives me eight inputs. So on the first round, I do, I'll grab the first one here, uh, input one through eight off of the two cards, and on your unused channels, you have to jump room together on the wiring arm to common or negative. And then for the second round, same thing again, except that now I'm doing the last eight channels and the first eight are jumping. So that's all really straightforward. Um, you put a value, and this is all BCD or two's complement, and you put a value into the output card, that same value, plus or minus, you know, one or two percent, should be able to be read in the input card. And these, the other item, or the other thing to notice on these, is these are 12-bit. They're not the 16 or 32-bit of today's cards, they're 12-bit. And industry ran on that for many years. And when you look at it now, do you really need this 16-bit resolution when you're plus or minus a little bit on, on something. It, it all depends. If you're running a nuclear plant, well, yeah. But if you're just running a, a sawmill with an old edger on it, yeah, it gets a little iffy. So now, back to, this, back to the bench. We're going to bring everything over. We're going to open up the module, the input module, have a look at it, and I'll show you how to set it up for the hardware. And then we'll go online with the voltage, and the current is exactly the same, except we're due, but we'll, we'll do a quick video on that one too. And uh, we'll be right back. This is going to take a few minutes. Thanks a lot. All right, here we are on the bench. Now, I've taken the four screws out of the, off the cover. So here's our card. And as you hopefully can see, depending upon the light, there we go hopefully there. A little closer. Okay, so we've got four inputs common, four inputs common, four inputs good, um, and two commons at the bottom and reading through the documentation all of the commons are common on the 
fact, hooked together in the card. This is not an isolated situation. So you can set this card up in three basic different configurations. So you take out your four screws, move your cover over, there's the inside. Now here's the inside of the card. We bring it up and right here is a diagram that shows what these jumpers do. Now this is how you set what you want your card to be. Currently, with the two jumpers straight up and down, it is in current mode single-ended. You can also have current mode differential, or down here at the bottom, where you've got one this way and one that way, which is what we're going to change it to here in a minute, is voltage mode single-ended and differential. So, generally, in most applications that I've ever seen, it's either current or voltage single-ended to give you the 16 channels to work with. Now, as you can see, this card has four capacitors in it, it's got a little transformer, all kinds of little stuff, and there's a jumper at the top here for emulating older systems, so this could be used with a PLC too if there's any left out there. Um, the documentation, which is available online, shows you, explains what that does. There's your run light, your fault light, and your terminals. So, let's change this over to voltage. So, right now it's in single-ended current. We want it in single-ended volt in voltage mode. So these little jumpers have been standard for I don't know how many decades. And you just take your finger and grab hold of them and pull them off. And there they are. Really kind of hard to see, but in this situation. And there is, and again, this is going to be really hard to see. If I hold it with a pair of pliers, it's hard to say. And no, that's not going to work. Anyhow, let it that out. So, anyhow, these little jumpers, industry standard for years, you just take them, pull them off. Uh, they got two holes in the bottom, bar it across the top. If you've done anything with electronics, you know what these are. You slide it back on, and there's a little bar in there. If you slide them so that the bar's made up, which again, you can't see it there, but it, they go on easier. So that channel is now voltage, the rest are still current. So what it'll do is just stop, stop the video for a sec. I'll finish ju changing these jumpers all over to voltage, because it takes a minute, couple of minutes. No need to just sit here and watch that. And then we'll uh, go over to the chassis. Be right back. Okay, so I've got all the jumpers changed, and you can probably see easy enough that they're all you know side by each, and there you can see the little bar at the back and the little bar in the back of this one. They're together. Um, there's a little lip on these things, and it was put there purposely so that you can get your fingernail on it to pull it up. So it's just, you know, whoever designed these, which is back in the, I'm, I'm thinking late 40s, early 50s, they, they thought about things like that back then. You know, things had to be able to be worked on. So anyhow, card's ready to go back, go into the chassis. Now I have downloaded the, pro, the program for, the, for voltage to the, to the card, or to the processor, and I'll just back things up here. Swing this up, and here's our chassis. Now, I have, right now, it is off. The power is off to the chassis. Now, with PLC5, unfortunately, compared to the control logics or some of the other processors, 
you have you're better off to have your chassis powered down rather than powered up because you can cause damage to the card sometimes it doesn't always happen 99% of the time it works fine so anyhow I'm gonna leave the uh, covers off which you can do with these slide it into the chassis set her in tight wiring arm goes on now these are just so that I can hook my uh, fluke meter to it and see what when I set a, uh, a value being a value for uh, BCD rather than uh, trying to use my math skills which are getting a little rusty in my old age I can just use my meter so common and everything's going to be set the same so we'll power it up and it takes not very long and everything will be ready to run like about right now now if control logic's booted up that fast the L80's for sure it would be a much better <laughs> sort of situation so anyhow the hardware is not going to change so what we'll do is we'll come down here to the software now oh, I didn't realize that was there we go so it's really simple logic for a PLC5 block transfer write and read for each card and if you look on the uh, edge here you can see the block transfers are triggering, triggering back and forth and working working well occasionally it goes into error but that's uh, I'm not sure on that right now but it's for our purposes right now here's our analog input and here's our and this is going just going into the uh, configuration screen for each each of the two cards there's our output so if I move the two of them right about there so it's plus minus minus four zero nine five to plus 4095 is our range which is our on our plus to minus 10 volt DC and if we change right right now we're at 6.318 volts if we change and this is hooked to channel fourth channel to 3500 goes to 8.54 go minus 3500 and we go minus 8.55 so and if we look at here because this is what we're commanding is 3500 our input is reading minus 34989898 and that's with the digital filtering turned on it is up at the top here so it only reads it every 0 0.05 seconds, so every half second. Um, with most stuff, do you have to read it any faster than that? It's hard to say. Um, so there we go. That's how you test these things. Um, you go through each. You set. I like to set all of them the same. So minus 3,500. That's where my errors coming in it's not uh, I'm gonna go through the reconfigure on that never said I was perfect did I okay so all of our inputs plus minus one digit when we you get to the fourth to the fourth digit so rather than 3500 which we're commanding 3499 
and on my fluke that's minus 8.55 volts so minus 8.55 the last digit is not seen anyhow in the processor so unless you've got a scope and you're looking for something that accurate um, you're going to be doing a lot of playing so there, there we go um, the milliamps are exactly the same setup um, except we've got two, two cards on the output and we do the first group then the second group and again um, I proved it out when I was testing all the cards earlier today that all of these are plus or minus a couple of digits at the end and that shows after 23 years that these cards have been out there, these particular cards, they're still working fine. So anyhow, there we go. I know it's a little long-winded, but uh, these, like I say, these old workhorses still work. They still make people money. They still produce goods all over the world. And uh, I don't see them going away anytime soon. Maybe in about 20 or 30 years, but we'll have to see. There'll probably still be lots out there then. Thanks a lot. Come back often. Subscribe if you'd like. Uh, ring the little bell if you are really interested in seeing more of my PLC stuff. Thanks a lot, and have a great week. Bye.